الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد ثم صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد One of the traits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguished this ummah the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is by three characteristics Allah ta'ala says كنتم خير أمة نخرجت للناس You were the best ummah nation that was brought forth to mankind based on three characteristics that is why this ummah earned that praise from Allah Ta'ala تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ you enjoying good وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ and you forbid evil وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ now when it comes to the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was placed third after enjoying good and forbidding evil when in fact the main thing that all the prophets and messengers were sent for is to call people to the worship of Allah ta'ala and that worship is based in the first place on the belief in Allah how come in this order Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set for enjoining good and forbidding evil being ahead of believing in Allah the reason behind it is this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah Ta'ala says فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى That those who deny any other deities other than Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala next to Allah when it comes to the worship and instead they worship Allah alone then those are the ones who are holding on to the tight and solid rope and that is the rope of the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No belief in Allah can be established unless it is preceded first. It is, there is a work that is done ahead of it. And that work is to cleanse the heart from any associations of worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to denying any of the, the other deities require the two tools enjoining good and forbidding evil. That is why when the prophets and messengers came, they were sent first of all to eradicate any worship other than the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And instead, establish the worship of Allah alone. Abdullah ibn Abbas said that from the time of Adam alayhi salam all the way to the time of Nuh, 
the time span was about 10 centuries where there was nothing but the worship of Allah alone. No kufr, no disbelief was committed by the sons of Adam, nor was there any polytheism, shirk. All of it was monotheism and tawheed, and that is the worship of Allah alone throughout this whole time from Adam السلام, all the way up until the time of Nuh السلام. It wasn't until the, during the time of the people of Nuh that the people started worshiping idols. Now, the worship was taken away from being exclusive to Allah and it is put in some other deities, in this case in those carved idols. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that from the time of Nuh السلام, all the way to the time of Muhammad وسلم, the best nation that was brought forth, set forth for mankind is the Ummah of Muhammad Now, when it comes to the reason why Allah Ta'ala praised this Ummah being the best is because they do enjoy good and they do forbid evil and then they worship, they, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, should those three characteristics be out, then there is no praise for this ummah, whether that is on an individual basis or as a community at large, which makes forbidding evil and enjoying good a must and in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be established, cannot be solid with an individual or with a whole group unless enjoining good and forbidding evil takes place. And each and every individual is responsible to do so. When the Prophet وسلم, said in a hadith that was collected by the Imam Muslim, Convey on my behalf to everyone, even if it is one verse, convey is a duty, is an obligation. Taklif, it is an obligation. From the Prophet وسلم, to each and every one of us. Anni tashrif, it is an honor. Because when you are relaying, you're not relaying the message from any common individuals. You are relaying a message from the Prophet ﷺ. The best of mankind, the most beloved of the sons of Adam to Allah Ta'ala is Muhammad So for you to convey the message of Islam on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ is an honor. And it's not much. That means it's, even if it is little, you can convey it. How would you convey the message of Islam to the Prophet, uh, on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ? There are a few pillars, if you will, when it comes to <clears throat> how to convey the message of Islam on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ, and therefore you fulfill the duty of enjoining good and forbidding evil. There are four pillars generally. The first one is sincerity. Al-ikhlas. Without sincerity of what, in, in what you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all of your work rejected. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So that Allah ta'ala may test you to see which one of you has the best of deeds. Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad in, this, in defining, giving it the definition of a good deed, he says, a deed cannot be good before Allah, in the eyes of Allah, until that deed fulfills two conditions. One, 
is to be sincere for Allah's sake. And second is for the individual to follow the guidance of Muhammad وسلم, in doing so. If, though, if any deed does not have these two conditions, it is no good. It is no good before Allah Ta'ala. If an individual would fulfill a good deed to the best of his ability, and it is a good deed by the definition of anyone from the outside, but the individual intended from it, meaning the intention, it is, wasn't done sincerely for Allah's sake, then that deed is null and void. It is of no good for that individual in regards to the rewards with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, if that deed is sincere, it was sincerely done for Allah's sake, but it was done in the wrong way, not in accordance to the way the Prophet wasallam wanted it to be fulfilled, then it is rejected. Without going too far, look around us in our contemporary right now as we speak with all the chaos happening around because of what the, the, this movie that came out about the Prophet ﷺ. There's no doubt that the people who are out there, some of them are not interested in anything, period. They're just following the crowd. They're out there demonstrating. They are angry. Why are you angry? Well, because of the movie. What movie? What the movie? Which movie? The movie. I don't know which movie. Tell me, which movie? The movie. See, some people have no idea why they're out there in the street yelling and screaming. They have no idea to start with. Now, this is in no way a call, by the way, to spread the movie around by either downloading it or forwarding the links to it because one of the characteristics of the believers Allah Ta'ala praised at the end of Surah Al-Furqan Ibad Al-Rahman what did Allah Ta'ala give as a praise about the characteristics of the people of Allah He says these are my people and for an individual to be included amongst those who are that are called my people, Ibadul Rahman, the servants of the merciful, the most merciful Allah, they have to have certain certain characteristics. One of those characteristics, <coughs> excuse me, is that if they come across any filth, they walk away from it clean and pure. They don't pollute their eyes, their ears, their heart with the filth. And there was a filth. So to take part in either watching it, it will do you no good but inflame emotions that you're not in need of. See? And one of the things that the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahaba used to do is when it comes to rumors, as long as they make sure that it is true, they leave it alone and they act upon it. But to spread it around by downloading it, forwarding the links and all in any uh, uh, forms of promoting that filth, it is not an act of a believer. Let's put this one aside because this is not just in this case, but in any case where there is a filth, should not partake in spreading it, but rather mute it, smother it, and leave it. Period. It is enough. It is enough to hear about evil. And don't take part in spreading that evil. This is one. Number two is <clears throat> when it comes to those who go out to demonstrate, there's a difference between demonstration and lunacy. For someone to go lunatic and go crazy 
under no circumstance can an individual justify that by saying I am sincere in my intention that what I want to do is defend the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Well, great. But your actions are nowhere close to defending the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi because this is exactly what Allah Ta'ala is saying لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا For your deed to be a good deed, it has to fulfill two conditions. <coughs> Excuse me. One is to be of course sincere for Allah's sake. Second, it has to be in accordance to the way the Prophet وسلم, left as a method. See, as a way to handle things and take it for a surety, for granted that there is not an affair in regards to the religion of Allah except that it was covered by Muhammad There is no way for any Muslim to come across any of his issues or the affairs of his religion except that he will find an answer of what it is and how to handle it. So for us to go out in the street and start breaking properties and killing uh, innocent lives and in some cases the individual exposed himself or herself to danger and even to death. There are so many casualties that took place. How can you justify that before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment? When the Prophet وسلم, in regards to properties that he said that when it comes to the honor the life and the property of a of a human being are off limit off limit that simple unless you find a reason an exemption Allah Ta'ala gave you in a general sense Every single individual's life and his honor and his property are off limit for anyone. No one has the right to touch the honor, the life, or the property of, a, of another individual. Look around us. Now we're talking about the basic rules, very basic things. And then you take those rules and apply them to what's happening, you will see what the the way things ought to be and the way things are. Because you will find a world of difference between what, how things should go and should be in accordance to the guidance of Muhammad Wasallam, and the way things are being handled and done by those who say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. So the very first thing is Al Ikhlas. Sincerity in the actions. Now, followed by knowledge. Again, we go back, knowledge in what? Knowledge in the religion of Allah. The guidance of Muhammad requires knowledge. When the Prophet made it a necessity for each and every believer to acquire knowledge in the deen is for this reason so that no one will come out and start making up rules and making up solutions as he or she goes based off the wall basically I think and I, I base my approach on my own opinion and my own background well guess what your background is different than mine, than the next person, than the next person, and then the next. So we will have a problem. Your approach is eventually going to come in odd with mine, and with the next person, and the next, and the next. How can we get to a solution? The Prophet them gave you and I the shortcut. Leave your opinions aside. Leave your background aside, your culture aside your customs aside and adopt the way of Muhammad and this is the way that will bring all of you together unite you together because when you fall back on 
political solutions, um, economical solution, and any of those approaches that we're trying to implement, we fall in so many, sometimes silly mistakes and silly problems. When in fact, the very simple solution is adopting the ways of Muhammad But how can we find what those solutions are when we don't even know what the guidance of Muhammad is? That requires some knowledge. That's why sincerity needs to be accompanied by, by knowledge in, in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third is ease and kindness in implementing the, that job of enjoining good and forbidding evil. <coughs> Simply because without having the kindness in the approach, what usually takes place is a shitta. People would resort to rough attitudes to implement, you have to do it this way. It's my way or the highway. There's nothing called my way or the highway. See? لا إكراه في الدين There is no compulsion in the religion. This is when it comes to even inviting people to an Islam. Allah Ta'ala did not make it mandatory upon each and every individual that you meet that that individual has to come into the fold of an Islam. Al-Islam, for us to understand, is a gift from Allah. It's not an imposition. You don't impose Al-Islam on anyone. It is a gift. May يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ That those whom Allah Ta'ala want good for, He will open their chest, He will open their heart to Al-Islam. And in those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want good for, they will make they will turn their back to al Islam. Those who turn their back to al Islam, it is neither your responsibility nor mine to make them become a Muslim. This is the general the, the Al Islam in its general sense as a whole, as a whole religion. You are not responsible to make every individual become a Muslim, but, it, but instead, you are to explain what an Islam is. You have to explain what an Islam is. How are you explaining what, how an Islam is? By every single thing about you. See, this is why the Prophet ﷺ wanted you and I to learn what the religion of an Islam is. In every single moment of your life you're supposed to convey al-islam to convey walaw ayah as the prophet sallallahu convey about the on behalf of the prophet sallallahu the religion of al-islam in the way you speak the prophet sallallahu taught you and i very simple rule man kana yu'minu minkum billahi wal yawmil akhir falyaqul khayran aw liyasmut very basic rule if one of you truly believe in Allah and in the hereafter, let him speak that which is good or be quiet. Isn't that a golden rule? Either you say that which is good or you be quiet. Don't we find it in the real world that the majority of the problems that we bring on ourselves are a result of speaking wrong. And then you come around and you say, I didn't mean it. And then it's not just you and I, this, look around. And then this is the season of, mashallah, elections. And the way you say things and how you say them and when you say them matter. See? That's why when the Prophet ﷺ spoke, he never came back and apologized. He would never say anything unless if it is weighed properly, said properly, and the appropriate time is calling for it. So when he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, إِيَّاكَ وَمَا يَعْتَذَرُ مِنْهُ These are all golden rules. Beware of that which you say and then come back and apologize for. Don't say it in the first place. That way you don't have to apologize for anything. 
This is so when, when you speak, when you act, when you act, the Prophet وسلم, action comes as a translation of that which resides in your heart. And he said وسلم, about that which resides in your heart, that one of you will not truly believe until he would love for his brother that which he would love for himself. You would never love that which is evil to yourself, would you? Then why would you wish it on another person? And if you don't wish it for another person, therefore you will never act evil towards anyone. This is when it comes to a statement. And then also when it comes to the actions, not only that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of it was put in the most eloquent guidance in the Quran in Surah Al-Isra. Allah ta'ala says, إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا That when it comes to you having to look into your own self, and watch for whatever you listen to, and whatever you see, and whatever you say, and whatever resides in your heart, beware. And be careful because you will be held accountable about each and every single thing that touches those areas. If it is something you're looking at, beware. The Prophet ﷺ warned you from looking at that which is haram. Why? Because it would lead you to that which is haramabuni'alafasitfawafasit. If you take the path of looking at that which is not lawful for you to look at, know for surety you will act upon it. So it's not limited to just what? The look. It will be translated to an action. Tayyip, do not listen to that which is not lawful for you to listen to. Use it. People are still arguing. And those are who say, Shadu an la ilaha illallah, Shadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. They're still arguing whether music is halal or haram. Wallahi, if we're still, still uh, running in that circle uh, of whether music is halal or is it haram, well, Wallahi, we still have a long way to go when it comes to learning the basics of our religion. That basics we're still arguing about, the fundamentals, is music halal or is it haram? See, when the Prophet wasallam made it very clear for you and I that music is very haram, it's absolutely flat out haram. Why? Because this is the instrument, the tool that shaitan uses to deviate the majority of the sons of Adam. You either side with Allah Ta'ala said, Allah Ta'ala did not put two hearts in the chest of an individual. You either have a heart that will follow the music or the heart that will follow Al-Quran, one of the two. See? You will not find two hearts. One will listen to music and turn the switch, turn this heart off, and turn the switch of Al Quran on this on the second heart on. And mashallah, you enjoy in, mashallah, the recitation of the Quran. Oh, I'm done with the Quran, turn it off, turn it You only have one heart. And that heart can either be affected by Al Quran or by music. And for a surety, if the priority goes to music, say goodbye to Al-Qur'an. And if the priority goes to Al-Qur'an, say goodbye to music. And once you get your heart disciplined on one pattern, you will follow it. Wallahi music, you hear it, and you will find some irritation in your ears, irritation in your heart. But if you're used to music, you listen to Al-Qur'an, it is so heavy for you to last, Five seconds listening to Al-Qur'an. When Al-Qur'an fihi shifa, Qur'an is a medicine, a medicine spiritually for the heart. And if the heart gets the true medicine which is from, from the Qur'an, then the whole body will benefit from that medicine as the Prophet وسلم, says in the hadith that was collected by Al-Imam Muslim on the authority of al numan ibn Mashir. The low hadith where he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ala wa inna fil jasadi mudra Verily there is a limb of flesh in the human body. If it is pure and healthy, the rest of the body is pure and healthy. And if it is sick, ill, then the rest of the body is ill. So wait a minute. And that limb of flesh is the heart. 
And even in the medical terms, you say that this individual is having some heart problems. You will not find this individual going and jogging and running and doing all of his physical uh, activities. He's watching for his heart medical problem with his heart. Similarly, when you have a spiritual problem with your heart, the whole body follows. And that shows in the way the individual is from the outside <clears throat> and in the way the individual carries himself through his days and nights and weeks and months and years, his life.